Now it is time for some draft preview, some futures game preview. This is one of the biggest baseball weekends that there ever is. This is huge, but it's not just the Home Run Derby. It's not just the All-Star Game. There is plenty going on, and it starts this weekend with the draft and with the futures game. And to talk about that, I would like to welcome on set some good friends, some great writers for MLB on Fox, Jake Mintz, George. Jordan Schusterman of Cespedes wow. Family Barbecue. Wow. I am excited to have you guys out here. Jake has wow. the best mustache of any writer we have. Jordan is the biggest Mariners fan of anybody that I yes. know, and I am pumped to welcome these guys out. So, guys, thanks for thanks for having me. us oh, over. This so, is lit. It's like being on Oprah. This is crazy. <laughs> yes, I, I get compared interest. to her often. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're thrilled to be here. This is, this is a quite a good setup you got. So. Thank you. And let's start with the draft, which takes place on Sunday, mm. correct? You guys will be there, I oh, hear. Yeah, yeah. We'll hoping be, to get oh, picked. Yeah. Dumb question. Hoping to get picked. <laughs> we'll see about that. No, okay. it's been Sunday, maybe day two or three. <laughs> okay. Not happening on Sunday. This is the year, Ben. So it won't be first overall, but I, I do want to start there. Let's talk about what everybody wants to know, because mm. I feel like college baseball isn't as big yet as some other sports, but it's getting more and more popular. A big reason for that, I think, is you don't see the guys immediately sure. in the big leagues. You don't see them get drafted, and next thing you know, they're your starting quarterback on your favorite team. It takes a little while. So everybody will get to know who the first overall pick is. So, Jake, I want to start with you. Who do you think has the best opportunity to be taken first overall? So the Orioles are picking first, and... Your it's Orioles. My favorite baseball team. And if you talk to people around the industry, no one has any idea what they're going to do. Wow. The, I don't even think the Orioles know right now as we live and breathe in this moment. But you know. But I know because I can. <laughs> I have the That's So Raven like into the future yeah. power. Um, there are a couple names that are in the mix for the first overall slot. I would say there's Brooks Lee, who's a college shortstop out of Cal Poly in California. There's a high school second baseman named Tamar Johnson from the Atlanta area. And then, of course, Drew Jones, the son of... Of Andrew Jones, also from the Atlanta area. One of your favorite players. Drew Jones is from the Atlanta area as well. Yes, he is. And now he's probably like the consensus best dude available because the draft is so weird and funky and there's ways to save money and spend that money later on in the draft. He might not go number one overall to the Orioles. So I feel like Drew Jones, of the names you just mentioned, when people hear the draft this year, he's the name I feel like everybody knows. So there is a legitimate chance that he does go first overall. Yeah, there, I would say there's a, a definitely a good shot right yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when you are have established yourself as the clear talent, kind of the way that Adley Rutschman had, you know, a few years ago when the Orioles did take him number one, he was clearly the best player in the draft. And so I think some people say, yeah, it's obvious. It's Drew Jones. Sure, he might come with a big signing bonus, but when you're that good and you are arguably that much better than everyone else in the class, and I love some of these other players, then yeah, it wouldn't be that crazy. I'm not going to be surprised if Drew Jones goes number one. But this happened last year, right? The Pirates had the number one pick. A lot of people thought they were going to take either Jordan Lawler or Marcelo Meyer, both of whom were high school shortstops. They ended up zagging at the last moment and took a catcher from Louisville named Henry Davis. So like, the MLB draft is super weird. You really don't know what's going to happen, and I think you are right that part of the reason it's not quite as popular as the other drafts is that there's just this weird gap of time right, between when a player is picked and when they show up at the stadium playing for your favorite team in the big leagues. Can we expect any similarities between Drew Jones and Andrew Jones, Jordan? Uh, yes, they both have Drew Jones <laughs> Any in their similarities name. on the field? Okay. You no. can't spell Andrew Jones without Drew Jones. And, and you know, you, you, it, this is not going to shock you, but he's pretty good in center. He's a pretty mm. good outfielder. I know that might, but I know, <laughs> hold on, I don't want to go too crazy. Uh, but yes, you know, obviously he's he's an elite defender. But the reason he's number one in the class is because the bat has come along so fast, so quickly, um, and, and just to a degree where it's like he's now showing, you know, plus hit tool, plus power. When you combine that with you know plus defense and center, also just look at him. He already looks like you know a big league level, you know player body right even for a high schooler and so that's really what you know has him stand out of everyone else of course he's a good center fielder he's also had some sick videos go viral like we're starting to see more and more high school videos Mm -hmm. of baseball players thank god we've seen high school videos and now we're seeing drew jones hitting bombs and pimping homers it's sick we were literally talking about that as we walked over here about how this is the first generation of player that uh, of like of baseball player in a long time that wants to be famous and yeah. wants to be notable. Baseball I call it, it. I, I think we, you and I might have talked about this at some point, but like the Derek Jeter effect, right? Where Jeter was very much not a me guy. And he created this sense of kind of in baseball culture of 
dampening down your own personality for the sake of the team. And, you know, there are are pros to that, and there are obviously negatives to that in terms of growing the game. This generation grew up with Instagram. Good. That's a big deal, right? They were on their phones all the time, Ah. and these kids want to be seen, and they want to be online, and, like, I think that's actually good for the game. It's a big deal, and I think it's massive for the game of baseball because you mentioned Jeter, and it continued on with a guy like Mike Trout, who is one of the greatest to ever play, but he doesn't care to be that guy in front of the camera. and He just just wants to ball, and that's fine. That's cool, but, like, these kids in this draft, Jones is a great example of that. Like, he, okay, Andrew Jones has more Instagram followers than, like, Matt Olson. Like big league all stars <laughs> right now, like he's Good. already more popular than these guys online. Okay, so moving on to some other players, there's other players in this draft that do have some affiliation with big league all stars of the past. Sure. Matt Holiday's son is involved in this draft. Talk a little bit about Jackson Holiday and how good or yeah. how you know where you think he could possibly go. Is he the real deal? He might even be another one that you could see at the very top with the Orioles, but certainly oh, wow. in that top five mix. Last summer, you know, there were a lot. By the way, you know, Carl Crawford's son, Justin Crawford, yeah. is in this class. Um, you know, Lou Collier's son, uh, Cam Collier's, son, like a lot of former big leaguers. But Jackson Holiday is interesting because he was more in that back of the first round mix by the end of last summer after all the showcases. And then this spring, he just went crazy, setting all kinds of Oklahoma high school state records, sitting over 600. He's got 18 homers. He's unbelievable. And then I was like, oh, wait, he's going to be a top five pick. So that's that's how quickly it can happen. And when you have, you know, the bloodlines and then you have the performance and then you have just, you know, that kind of senior season, that's what a top five He'll be top like. five. Yeah, he'll yeah. be top five. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I would caution with the bloodlines is just because an older brother perhaps throws 100 doesn't yeah. mean that the younger brother might. But offspring might be a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Offspring yeah. Might, might be a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. Um, I want to talk about some other guys that you guys are certainly interested in. Cam Collier yeah. is a stud. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about Cam. So what's really interesting about Cam Collier is how young he is. So Bryce Harper did this thing when he came out of high school where he got his GED after his sophomore year of high school, went to a junior college as a 17-year-old and was drafted essentially a year earlier than he would have. And was raking in a junior college. And was raking at a junior college in Nevada and in a wood bat league, right, to show scouts that you're proficient with that. Collier is really the first guy to do that since Harper at this scale. So he was in an Atlanta high school, got his GED, went to Chipola in Florida, which is one of the top JUCOs in the country, and was really, really impressive there as a 17-year-old. But what he did that's even more interesting, he went to the Cape this summer. He spent a month on the Cape Cod, or in the Cape Cod League, like which is the best summer league in baseball. Yeah. He, yeah. he held his own against kids the who Cape were five Cod years old. Cape Cod is the him. elitist of elite college yep. baseball yep. talent. So yep. if you're performing, if you're even in the average there, yeah. Yeah. you're doing, you're going to get drafted. And he was raking as a 17-year-old there. And so he'll be a top 10 pick. Super interesting path. And I did it, you know, I, I interviewed him last week just to, whose idea was this, right? How, who came up with the idea to kind of reclassify and graduate early? And yeah, he was like, like well, my dad was a big leader. He saw the talent in me at a young age. He let me know this was a possibility. And Cam is the type of guy talking to him on the phone. You know, when you talk to someone who's like a teenager and you're like, oh wait, no, you're 28 on the inside. That's exactly what Cam <laughs> Collier was like. Like that's 100% that kind of guy. And he was very mature, very impressed with him. Taylor Trammell went to the same high school. Oh wow. Um, and Taylor told me a great story that he got a call from their coach who was like, hey, we got this kid, this freshman, his name's Cam, like, he's pretty good, like, I want you to come see him. And Taylor says to me, like, you know, like, people say that all the time, right? Like, right. oh, there's this kid at the high school, like, he's you gotta come see pro, him, he's gonna be me. all right. Sure, sure, and Taylor, right. like, shows up the high school, like, whatever. And he sees the kid take one swing, he's like, oh, oh, no, that's a, <laughs> that's a top 10 pick. <laughs> that's great. Uh, another name that everybody is familiar with, Kumar Rocker, but not everybody is familiar with what transpired from last year's yeah. draft sure. to now. He is actually in this year's draft again. Talk a little bit about the transition from last year and how we got to where we are now, and where can where can we expect him to go this year? Well, he had so much fun last year, he just wanted to run it back. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, this yeah. was sick, I gotta yeah. do this again. Yeah. He was drafted well, by the New York Mets last was. year, he early was. in the first round, and now... Well, not early enough, right? So not early when, enough. We, when we got there on draft night, you know, back in, in, in Denver, we we were all expecting. I think most people tuning in last year was like, this is, of course, Kamar Rocker, he's going to be in the top five. Right, he didn't go. Five, top. six, yeah. seven, eight, nine. We're all looking getting, around like, what, what's going Brady on? He's getting Brady Quinn. Yeah, like, what's going on, right? <laughs> like, where, where is he going to go? So the Mets take him at 10, and then after, they, they don't come to a deal. There's disputes over their medicals. They didn't, they 
obviously he was asking for a big number. What was the dispute over it. his medicals? So this is way more complicated than we have time <laughs> to get into. But we, all you need to know is that uh, players submit differing levels of medical information going into the draft pitchers, especially. It's not super uncommon, um, but in his case in, in particular, and the way that he was pitching down the stretch, there were some people that just watched and said, ah, he's probably not quite right. His velo was down. His velo was, yeah. was dipping. But uh, eventually the Mets... What they did see after they did the post-draft you know, physical, they said, we don't like what we see. Now, we don't know what that means exactly, right? And different right. teams, doctors are going to see different teams, different players' medicals and think different things. You open any pitcher's arm up, you're going to find something oh, yeah. in there you don't yeah. like. But the point is, is that the Mets decided we would rather just punt on this, which is terrible strategy in my opinion, and get our compensation pick next year. They have two picks in the first round this year instead of take the risk and give Rocker, you know, two, three, four million dollars. Now, obviously, that's a huge disappointment for everybody. Disappointment for the kid. It's really unfortunate that Rocket had to kind of sit out the season. Yeah. That's um, what's the most unfortunate is, right? Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you get drafted and you don't sign with the team that drafts you, the team doesn't really lose anything, right? They get a pick the following year. Sure. I mean, there, there's a reputation hit and whatever. But for Rocker, he just has to wait an entire year to re-enter the draft, and he's re-entering this year, and people think he'll be in the back half of the first round. Yeah, so, but it's still, he's still sort of a mystery. I mean, he did pitch an independent ball a little bit and looked pretty good. Uh, there was some reporting he did have a shoulder, minor shoulder oh, uh, no. surgery. At the minor, of, Ben. At the I last hear season. you. No, I'm, I'm kind of with you, too. Anything but hey. You, I would rather hear elbow than yes. shoulder. I, I totally hear that, um, but he showed enough uh, pitching on the, you know, over the last uh, few weeks in independent ball where the stuff was looking good again. There are still a lot of questions here. Now, here's the only thing I know. The Mets are taking him again. <laughs> other, than that. That, other than that, I have no idea where Rocker's going to go, and I'm, I'm fascinated to see. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3 0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213 537 9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.